Hi, Pete Moore, Gunmark TV. And what we have here is a set of Hawk, which is a great UK optic company, laser range finder binoculars. It's their first ever model. It's the Frontier LRF, and it comes in a choice of 8x42 and 10x42 magnification. These are the 8x42s. They're slightly more compact, and they weigh 35 ounces, where the 42s weigh 37 ounces. Not a lot in it, really. See, it's all rubber armour, green rubber armour, all very European, very nice. This is your main focus wheel here. Here you have the battery compartment. And it comes with captured rear lens covers and, again, captured front lens covers. These are really good because you just flip them on you don't lose them. They're a really brilliant idea. These are twist up and twist down eye caps so it suits people with glasses without glasses and these are what they call diopters this right hand diopter focuses the OLED display and the left hand focuses the barrel so that is pretty much it from that point of view they come as we shall see with in six modes or modes within the menu button as such they come with a bag and a body harness price is a little bit interesting Hawk quote 995 for the uh, for the 8x42 and 1095 for the 10x42. I've had a look around the shops and you can expect to pay 895 for the 8x42s and 995 for the 10x42s. It's a typical thing. They quote a retail price, but the truth of it is there's always somebody happy to uncut it. Just so here is that this is the um, the actual laser button that pings off there, and that's the mode button, what I call menu, and also as ever they come with it highlight transition optics which is a good thing and the OLED display shows all the options and modes and it's in red and it's even got a laser emitter it shows you when the laser is firing or not and it comes up also with a low battery indication as well okay that's it let's now look at the modes and see how they affect us six modes Standard mode is what most people will use. It just measures a straight line to the target. Nothing too clever, but that's what they're all about, laser range finders. There's one called near, and it, it pretty much picks the first vertical object in its path, which is a bit odd. I can't quite understand why you put it on there, but they do. And obviously it has a function, perhaps if you're like a, um, an air gun shooter where you don't need a far distance. But when you look through the view, the OLED view, there's a little flag symbol shows up. And then you have hunt mode and in hunt mode again it's straight line to the target but what it does do it sees through stuff like low grass shrubs and things if you have a deer at say here we are now have deer about 75 80 yards and it's behind a stand of sort of skinny foliage the laser and the view will look through it and it'll bounce off the target not off the um off the bushes and things that i think is quite useful Another good thing is rain mode, which is something that Bushnell invented a long time ago for early laser range finders. And what it does, it allows you to see through rain droplets because sometimes if you're out hunting and it's raining and you've got a shot, you put your binos up and the rain gets in the way. And especially with a laser range finder, if it's too raining too much, the beam will refract off the, off the rain droplets. But it only works after 30 yards or so, or 30 meters. But it's a good idea and then on the um, on the icon you get a cloud then you have um, what we've got HD horizontal distance and this is the first of the angle settings you're probably aware that if you're shooting downhill or uphill the actual distance to the target is shorter than the straight line distance to the target and so if it's shorter then you have to compensate for it by aiming off or putting a correction in your scope so what it does when you press the the button in HD mode you get the straight line distance and then underneath you get the actual angle distance of where it is so say for instance the target's 150 yards away in straight line and you ping it with the binoculars and it shows that the actual angle distance is 125 yards then you can then compensate for that bullet drop pretty clever stuff and that um, just has an HD symbol with like a little angle sim sim symbol again in the, in the readout so you know where you are then you have angle setting which is very similar it gives you the, uh, the horizontal distance as such and then it doesn't give you the um, straight line distance in yards or meters it gives it to you in an angle because some people for longer shots they will work out the angle and do it that there's two ways of actually adjusting for range on a down or uphill shot 
You've got six levels of brightness, again it's quite useful. And you can set the unit to yards or meters. Using it is dead easy really, it's quite simple. Use the mode to select, once it's selected it's there. Then press the button and it fires up the laser. When the laser fires up there's like a little sort of starburst that appears around the aiming grid. You'll see in the picture I put in which shows you it's a good shot in terms of um, the actual laser going and coming. Then of course you've got a low battery thing. So for the money not bad. Bearing in mind that if you're paying for European prices so like Swarovski or Zeiss or that sort of thing you could these days be paying two seven fifty maybe three grand. Great optics, a lot of money. Whereas this thing, under a grand, and for hunting, they'll do the business. The maximum range is quoted at 1,000 metres. Whether or not you get a ping at 1,000 metres is, is debatable because with any, any laser range finder, the further you go out, the smaller the target is. And if the target is not reflective, then that will affect your actual readout. And I always recommend with this sort of thing, if you see a target, you ping it two or three times if it goes like sort of 250 275 260 and then one goes 400 then you know the 400 ones out the window because you haven't held the binoculars tight enough but that sort of thing there's also a scan function where you can in any mode you hold it down here and as you move it'll pick up targets across which again is quite useful so what do i think overall say price is good got captive lens covers which is nice I found the, for me, the focus wheel a little bit too far forward. I'm used to buying this with the focus wheel back here. That's neither here nor there. You get used to it. This is the battery compartment I've seen before. And it is, this bit unscrews, but it's very, very stiff. I don't think it's in this set of binoculars, but it's not very easy. You'd have to get something like a tiny pair of pliers in there so you could just lever it open, which is, not, which is just a bit awkward. It comes in a nice padded carry sack, which is good because it protects them and you can put a neck strap on, but it also comes with a harness, which basically allows you to wear the binos on your chest in the bag. I can see why it's a clever idea, because they're right up here where you need them, but I found them awkward to get out and in, in fact slow and they're just having slung around your neck, but again, it's entirely up to you if they do it. And so overall, you know, no real complaints, and I like laser rangefinder binos and monoculars. I started using them probably 20, 25 years ago, and I wouldn't be without them on the hunt. And they really do make a difference because if you know your ranges and you know your drops, you see a deer or any quarry, you know ethically you can shoot it and hit it. And that's the beauty of them. Plus you can check out the deer, if it's male or female, if it's shootable or what's wrong with it. Okay, that's it. Well done Hawk, I think it's a good product. I think the price is right for what it is. And um, so if you like that, tell your friends, comment, support the website and it's Pete Moore signing off. And I'll see you again soon. And don't forget, if you want to speak to me, it's pmore.shootingsports at gmail.com. And I'll catch you later. Good shooting.